All right, welcome to N3 Electrotechnology, and uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a revision in this video. We'll be looking at a past exam paper, but in order to shorten the video, we'll just be looking at questions one to question three. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and to share these videos. Why are field poles and the armature cores of DC machines laminated? They are laminated to reduce the effects of eddy currents. Name two types of bearings used in DC machines. We get bore bearings and roller bearings. State the main function of the following components. The main function of the field coil is to produce the magnetic field when they carry current. The pole shoes is to distribute the magnetic flux over the air gap. Choose the correct word inside of the brackets. Now this wound armature assembly is for heavy current machines, therefore low voltage, so it will be lap wound. Determine which um, compounded machine we're going to use here. Is it cumulatively or differentially? Well, the turns oppose each other, so therefore it is differentially. State Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction according to Faraday's first law, and EMF is induced whenever there is a change in flux. Name two methods to improve the effects of commutation and to reduce sparking, brush shifting, interpoles, and increase the brush contact. For our first calculation, a 200 volt DC shunt wound generator produces an armature current of 42,75 amps. The resistance of the shunt field and armature is 125 ohms and 0.15 ohms respectively. Now for a generator, remember we are supplying electrical supply and therefore producing armature currents. To calculate the magnitude of the generated EMF, E is equal to V plus IA times RA. The terminal voltage is 200 volts, the armature current is given, and the armature resistance is the smaller value, of 0.15 ohms. Therefore, the generated EMF is 211,65. Now, the second part of the calculation is quite difficult. Now, for a shunt wound generator, inside of our formulas, the moment you are given an efficiency, we'll always be using power out in our formulas. Here, we've got a turbine driving a generator, and this prime mover is rated at 9,5 kilowatts. For a generator, it is mechanical in and electrical out. Now, before we can calculate the efficiency, we first need to determine the output power. The input power of the prime mover is 9,500 watts. To calculate the output power, it is the supply current multiplied by the supply voltage. However, if you notice, the armature current is given. So we'll have to determine the supply current first. To determine the supply current, it'll be IA minus I shunt. We just have to manipulate that equation. Just remember, a generator is always positive. So therefore, the armature current of 42,75 minus V shunt over R shunt. And we end up with a supply current of 41,15 amps. Now we can go ahead and calculate the output power. The supply current multiplied by the supply voltage of 200. Therefore, the output power is 8,230 watts. To determine the efficiency, it's output power divided by input power multiplied by 100. And therefore, this generator is operating an efficiency of 86,63%. Explain the term armature reaction as applicable to DC machines. It is this distortion of flux entering and leaving the armature when the armature conductors carry current. And you'll notice that the axis also shifts from the geometric neutral axis to the magnetic neutral axis. For our final calculation for this video, a 400 volt, 15 kilowatt, six pole DC shunt motor has a lap wound armature. The armature has 100 slots with four conductors per slot. The motor operates at 85% efficiency. Calculate the useful flux per pole 
if the torque is 136 newton meters with a field resistance of 275 ohms. Now for a DC motor, we have electrical in and mechanical out. Now, before we can determine the flux per pole, torque is given. So therefore, if you have a look at the formula for torque, it is IA multiplied by the number of pole pairs, multiplied by the total number of conductors, multiplied by 0.318, and then multiplied by the flux per pole measured in Weber, and divided by the number of parallel paths. This is a six pole machine, therefore there are three pairs. So when calculating the number of parallel paths, it will be two times three. Now you'll see the armature assembly below has slots and for each slot, there are a certain number of conductors. And this armature assembly is lap wound. Now, before we can substitute the values, we first have to determine the armature current. The armature current is not given. So to calculate the armature current, the moment we see that efficiency is given, we're gonna be using power input in our formula because this is a motor. So to calculate the input power, it is the power output divided by the efficiency. And you'll notice that the input power is larger and the output power is smaller. Right, now we can go ahead and calculate armature current. This is a motor, so therefore it's always minus. So it's gonna be the supply current minus the shunt current. To calculate the supply current, it's power in over V minus V over R shunt. The input power is larger. It's 17647,06 watts divided by the terminal voltage of 400. To calculate the shunt current, it is a terminal voltage of 400 divided by the shunt resistance of 275. Therefore, the armature current is 42,663 amps. Now we can go ahead and substitute the values to determine the flux per pole. The torque is 136 Newton meters. The number of parallel paths for a lap wound armature will be two times three, which gives us six. The armature current of 42,662. We have a six pole machine, therefore there are three pairs. The total number of armature conductors will be 100 multiplied by four, and that gives us 400 multiply by 0 0.318, and the flux per pole is 0 0.05 Weber. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned, and I'll send you the video for the next half of this session. Thank you.